Welcome back, Wayfinders. Today's video is going to be a conglomeration of several different points. I'll be starting off with talking of the merits of pitch wood, which is just pine that has been super saturated with pitch, otherwise known as resin or pine sap, uh, and has dried out to the point where it has become extremely flammable. Now, this can happen for any myriad of different reasons. It could be a tree that was struck by lightning and died very quickly. It could be an older tree that has developed dead portions and has dedicated too much sap to an area that is dying. Or it could just be a stump that over time has that saturated itself and prevented itself from rotting. Uh, what happens here is because it's waterproof, they tend to hold up for a longer period of time. So if you go around the woods and find old stumps that are very difficult to cut into or very difficult to carve into, good bet that there's a little bit of pitch pine down in the bottom. Granted, that would have to be a pine tree or any kind of deciduous tree. Secondly, we're going to talk about ways we can turn a larger piece of wood like this into different types of tinder and why we would be using this versus something like the briar wood we used with a pipe. And I have those examples here bef uh, before us. The last thing I'll be doing is doing a rehack of the survival necklace, which I've been wearing for two months now, and talk a little bit about the merits of this and whether or not I still recommend it over time. First, I have some briar wood here. Uh, briar wood is also known as burl wood. It's what I used to carve in this pipe with a few episodes ago. Uh, you can see it's holding up pretty well. I've got a few smokes through it. I'm not a smoker, but I just wanted to have it have some use so it has some good flavor to it. Uh, and it's working out really nicely for me. This is a very, very dry wood, uh, which should burn very nicely. And I have my pile right here. Next to it, we have a sampling of the pitch wood, which I carved off here with a carving knife, again, from a few episodes ago as well. And we're gonna light both of these and see the differences between the way they burn. Just start with a lighter, make it easy. We'll go into ferrocerium or metal match use in a, a little bit later on. You notice I have to hold this here for five or 10 seconds just to get it to smolder, barely have a flame going, and it's gone out again. You can give it another five or 10 seconds. Still having a hard time lighting this. And this is extraordinarily dry wood that I've shaved down into a tinder-like substance. You take the same types of shavings, or even a little bit bigger than this, from pitch wood, and this is how quickly and easily it lights up. Instantaneously. You'll also notice that there's a massive amount of black smoke coming off of the pitch wood. This is all unburnt fuel. There's even more fuel and more energy here than we're even using. When you see black smoke come off a fire, that is because the fire is not burning efficiently enough to burn the extra fuel, much like if you were to burn a car tire, which I don't recommend, but you can see how much fuel is coming off of it. If you see white smoke like this coming off the fire, that is either a small amount of fuel or it can also be water vapor, so you may not have very dry stuff. I know this is dry stuff here, so that's gonna be fuel, but you can see that white smoke off of a wet fire as well. This is why a smoke generator works so well when you pile a bunch of green wood on top of a raging fire, you can create a massive amount of smoke for emergency signaling devices. So how do we get from our large piece of wood here to a tinder that's going to be functional for starting fires? Well, the two techniques I'm gonna to cover today are going to be heartwood shavings and feather sticks. Both of these can be done with any size knife, any size piece of wood. However, for the purpose of in front of this camera, I'm gonna be using this tiny piece of pitch and this little carving knife that I used during my briar wood pipe video. I'm going to scrape off at a 90 degree angle to the wood. I'll start off slow and build my way up. Some people scrape both directions, but I find that it catches. So I tend to go single scrapes down. Creating these heartwood shavings. Now it's called heartwood shavings because they typically work best with extraordinarily dry wood, which you find in the heart of the tree, of a dead tree. However, with pitch wood, you really can't go wrong. You'll see that this is a very, very aerated and very porous material. This will take to a spark very, very nicely. So we'll leave that down here. We'll use that shortly while I show you a couple of simple small feather sticks. Now I like to make the big Nordic feather sticks where I have a large knife and straight blade and I'm creating giant feathers. 
However, I don't want to burn through my beautiful piece of pitch today doing that. So I'm just going to take nice and easy cuts off of this and show you what an example of how to make those feathers. So what we need here is we need a sharp corner to work off of. Any one of these should work. Here we have a nice one. Here we have a couple. I don't like these angles here. We'll start here and see where we go. We're going to provide consistent and even pressure and make this curling piece of wood come up. We want to stop before we get to the end because if it cuts it off, they won't be consolidated. And we want this to be a single consolidated group of feathers or a feather stick. Once I cut that corner off, it creates two more corners for me. So I'll start another corner here, another corner here. That one gouged a little deep. You see it's thicker, but that's fine. It'll still light up. And I'm going to start working these feathers back and forth until I have a nice little piece of wood here that I can dig in deep and break off in one consolidated piece. That is a very small example of a feather stick. We'll be using that for pitch. It'll work very nicely. Let's see if we can get a little bigger one here. Looking for that sharp corner here. Wood's coming apart because it's got so much pitch in it. A couple more out of this. Now again, typically I would make massive feathers. For example, today, we break these off, add them to the pile. Anytime that you have this curling wood, you know that it's thin enough to light, we're gonna be fine. Get one more out of here. Ooh, I like this part right here. We're digging into some really good pitch in the bottom here, which is actually causing me issues. But that's fine, it'll light really nicely. Which is not really good for beautiful feathers. So yeah, these are uh, nice, tiny little ones for us to use as our secondary tinder. Now you can light feather sticks up just fine by themselves. And you can do that using your ferrocerium or your metal match, or some call this flint, even though it has zero flint uh, in, inside of it. It's actually a complex metal of 11 different elements made in 1906 in Austria. If you want to learn more about ferrocerium, check out my video that I made a few months back about its composition and why it burns at such a high temperature. What I do is I've taken my Wazoo equipment here. Uh, Wazoo Survival Gear is the name of the brand of this. I've been wearing it for a couple of months. Uh, I find it to be pretty effective as a uh, fire starter and as a knife sharpener. I have my piece of noveculite here, Arkansas stone. It allows me to knock off some simple burrs very easily so I can keep my knives nice and sharp. And I'm wearing this on a daily basis. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Knock off a few burrs here and we're good to go. Allows me to dig in nice and deep for my ferro rod. The problem with this rod is it's so small that I can't use it like a normal striker. I have to place it down into the tinder like this, pull back the necklace so I don't cut it, and then I place my knife down on a hard surface and give it hard grinding strikes like this to get to work. Works well in a pinch. I prefer my larger ferro rod, but I have no complaints about this one either. The feather sticks here you'll see will light very easily and add to the fire. This is called a secondary tinder. We add our secondary tinder all at once, builds up. And this is where we can start adding on our kindling. I'll be doing a kindling and a wood breakdown video later in our series of Firecraft. We'll combine it all together in an outdoor video and show you where we go from tinder to kindling to full fuel and then fire lays will be the last part of that. All right, as this burns down, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. Today was primarily about pitch wood, tinder types, how to create those tinder types, and then a quick review of my Wazoo Equipment Survival uh, necklace. I'm excited about this thing. I'm, uh, I've been wearing it nearly every day. You can see it's starting to get a little grimy. I say my biggest complaint about the Firecraft necklace or the Survival necklace so far is that this leather tends to absorb dirt and grime um, I hit it with a soap bar this last week and it pulled a bunch of soap into this knot. It was a little harder to clean. I might switch this out for something a little more maintainable than leather. 
uh, or just start taking care of the leather a little bit better, to be honest. The ferro rod works really well for me. It's not my favorite ferro rod I've ever used, but it is effective as you saw today. And then the Noveculite Arkansas stone is by far my favorite part of this necklace. It's about a 600 grit stone and it's sharpened everything from my little uh, survival knives, my carving knives, to my pocket daily wear knife as well. Uh, so overall, I still love this thing. I'm sure I'm gonna break it because I'm not taking care of the leather. However, it's a win, it's still a buy in my book. So that's a good checkup on that equipment. If you enjoyed today's content, feel free to like, share, leave a comment below. Everything that you do to interact with this channel gets logged by the YouTube algorithm. So if you share it or if you comment or you like or you subscribe, it shows people that this video is being watched and it recommends it to more people out there. So anything you do is greatly appreciated. I love you guys. We're showing excellent support for the channel right now. Uh, I'm very excited to see where we go in the future. So again, thank you very much for my supporters. I'll see you next time.